Welcome back, everybody. Today, we're going to talk about low, low, low ground cover. How low can you go, Amy? Well, let's just see. Let's see. Are you ready, everybody? Oh, we sure, sure are, Stephanie. Am. Let's go. Okay, everyone. So we're going to go over 11 plants today, starting with four South Florida natives. Four and South Florida natives to this start. Powder puff mimosa. Love this plant. Mimosa strigolosa. Just did a project where we partnered with some folks down in, in Miami and we, we put this in a park of ours. And this is a beautiful Florida native, does not get very tall. And as you know from the title of our video, none of these plants are gonna get up to two feet. Most of them will stay well under that, so that's great when you want to have a low ground cover for your for your garden. This one is in particular very, very low growing. Love this plant. Can you can you point to it for us so people can see these beautiful flowers, Rach? Look at them. Aren't they spectacular? They look like from Dr. Seuss. They're so cute. These little pink fuzzy, fuzzy babies. And we have some other ones here that are ready to erupt. It's a it's just a really cool, cool plant. It, it's also known as the sensitive plant, and the reason for that is that these leaves will fold up when you touch them, so we're gonna show you that right now. Isn't that cool, Amy? That's, I love it, I love it. On to another beautiful purple plant, we have the railroad vine right here. Right, so another Florida native. This one's great for a seaside location. I did a project years ago at Venetian Causeway and put them in the bull noses. And these are just wonderful flowering ground covers. And I think I use that word wonderful a lot, but I just love plants and flowering plants in particular. And since this has this wonderful purple color, thank you, Stephanie, for wearing a purple shirt today. The railroad vine will spread rapidly across, so you do have to be, cons you just do have to watch about that, but it can handle a beachside condition. So if you live close to the, to the coast, it, it, it'll do very well. You'll see these on the dunes, actually. And they run with these long arms that streak out. But what we found is when you want to use them as a ground cover, especially in an area where it will be contained, you can trim those, those runners and then it'll start to grow in on itself. And then you get this very low ground cover with these beautiful, beautiful trumpet-like lavender purple flowers. Just so pretty. I believe there's also a white variety, but it's not as common, but it's just, just a wonderful native, native uh, ground cover for you to consider for your garden. The next one up is the dune sunflower. Dune sunflower, pollinator attractor. It's got these beautiful yellow flowers. We'll show you a video clip here of some of them, but it's just a really nice, tough Florida native. Dune sunflower gives it away. It's also a very salt tolerant plant in, in a sense it can handle salt spray, but it's a tough plant that gives you, gives you a lot of bright yellow flowers, you know, really pretty, really pretty and very tough. By the way, these are all gonna grow well in South Florida. That's what. We want to make sure you take away from this that these are going to do great down here from zones 9, 9A all the way to 11. Okay. So that's and our third one. We have the sea purslane. Sea purslane. This beauty here is not the sea purslane, but we saw it today, right? We wanted to give an example because it's not readily grown in a lot of nurseries, but you can get it. Sea purslane. This is purslane, which is a common plant that people use in South Florida at the summertime. It is, it is a perennial. It's really, really cool and you can get it in bicolor like this. Amazing flowers. They're, they're just, it's like a painting, right? It's beautiful. It's, it's crazy. It's it. like, it's just banana. This is bananas. Absolutely beautiful. And they come, the orange. Oh my God, you guys. The orange color of the purslane, I just drool over. It's such a pretty, pretty color, but all the purslanes are, are really cool. They bring pollinators and bees and butterflies. So it's a really cool plant to have in your garden. Doesn't grow tall. Do they grow or bud year round? These will grow year round. They like they prefer the more hot and humid summers to do their full flowering, so they'll taper off in the winter. And if you live further north, north of nine, they'll probably clap out a little bit on you, but they do bounce back. They're really tough plants. The sea purslane's super tough, but the flower is not as pronounced on the sea purslane. But it's a tough, tough for the native. The, the sea purslane is can grow right up against the bay or on a dune really cool plant so i think we hit all of our natives didn't we that was all of them all right so what are we on to next now we're on to the non-natives the first one is the artillery fern this beauty this was and i haven't told you guys this this was one of the first plants that in our house in fort lauderdale with mom 
over there off A1A. Oh yeah? Believe it or not, this plant is kind of salt tolerant. We, we had this in the driveway area where I first started planting. This is a tough, tough plant, artillery. So it's like, you know, like it can handle some deep, you know, mortar shells and still survive. If it survived when we were kids, it's tough. <laughs> it's tough. And it has this wonderful lime green color, chartreuse green, and it's just so pretty. It looks like this little tree. It's just so beautiful. It's just, oh, it's so fluffy. I can die. <laughs> <laughs> like the top of a broccoli stem. That's what I was, yes, yeah, right? And supposedly when the seeds come out, the seeds get ready to erupt from this, it can shoot out at a high force, very, very fast to spread the seeds. The way to propagate this thing is so easy. Just if a branch, you want to snip a branch off and put it in the ground, it's going to root. We'll do a propagation video if you guys want. Just leave us, just leave us a comment below and we'll show you. But this is such a cool ground cover because it's light green. And you know, you can see it against the blue Pacific juniper. It's different and that it gives a lightness to the color. Just a beautiful plant. Really cool. All right, the next one is the sunset. Oh, the jasmine. the jasmine. So this is in the, the Confederate jasmine family, multicolor. It forms a wonderful, wonderful ground cover. I said wonderful again. <laughs> I love that word. That's his key word. <laughs> it's, like, it's my go-to word. And it, it'll also trail up on trees and stuff, so you need to make sure you trim it. So it's very similar to the to the Asiaticum, the other all solid green jasmine that is common for ground covers. But this is one, and there's some others in the marketplace that you can get that can give you a little bit of, of color in your ground cover that doesn't grow too tall. So if you have any signage for knowing your address, you don't want something growing over it, well, you can you can consider this plant. It's really tough, and, and it will, will spread out real, real, um, real wide. One yeah, plant. and I touched the leaves, and they're not they're soft, so yeah. they don't poke you so much. Yeah. And this one is the Blue Pacific Juniper. So pretty, right? Yeah. It's just, I mean, ever since I was a kid, I just think, oh, can you help me grab this from your side? This is so cool, you all. It just cascades over. It's like a bonsai, you know? Look at this, so cool, super tough. Can handle being in a coastal area, not right on the dune, but a couple hundred yards in, you're not gonna have a problem with this plant growing there. It's very, very tough, grows very, very low. There's other varieties that grow down here well in South Florida, and it's it's just super tough. Doesn't get many pests, and you can have that stay low in front of some of your other tropical plants or other plants you wanna use. Now, one thing mentioning tropical, this has more of a Northern feel, not as much as a Southern feel, but it's just so cool. And you can definitely keep these as bonsais. They're so easy to train as, as a bonsai. Just beautiful, I love junipers. And this color is so beautiful, so pretty. Yeah, so that's that. Now, what are we on to? Now we're on I to... think it's, oh, I'm it's up. your turn, you're and up. I'm up and the first oh, is the- Oh, the limbo. <laughs> The Mondo. The Mondo. Yes, that's the Mondo grass. Ophia pogon japonicus. I believe that's the name, the genus species. And it is a wonderful ground cover that prefers more shade or part part shade, meaning, you know, when I say part sun, that means it's getting more sun during the day, but some shade. When you say part shade, when I mention that, that means it's getting more shade throughout the day. So you're going to get, you're going to get more dappled sunlight. I don't know if we can bring it in here to the sun see the sun cutting in maybe Rachel I don't know if you so like that there you go in and out this stays very very low this will get to about six inches it's going to stay very very low like the lowest of them all will be the Ophia Pogon the Mondo and the Mimosa which is so beautiful those will stay extremely low and they're just great and you want to plant them kind of close together because they don't grow super fast they're easy to propagate Amy has the Ripe Evergreen Giant which is similar and it's a grass-like plant but that gets much larger Big. it is considered a ground cover but it just gets it gets it gets tall it can it can it's be a cover. considered <laughs> you can hide behind it <laughs> so yeah now that we talked about that we have what others the next you have? one is the Taiwanese Exora oh that's this beauty right here this cutie patootie and beautiful I like the color right isn't it nice so it does not grow tall it's a compact Exora there's Exora Nora Grant, which I planted so many of those back in the 80s and 90s, which was a go-to plant. They're, they're, they're beautiful and tough plants, but they have much bigger leaves, much bigger flower. This one stays much lower. You have other colors you can get this plant in. It's, and it's just, just a beauty. So pretty, so tight and compact. So you can grow these in a nice big bed and get this shocking, shocking orange red color. It's more orange, right? Oh, I would say orange. Yeah, they call it red, but it's, yeah, so cool. 
It's so pretty. Reddish orange. Yeah. Yeah. And the next one is in front of Stephanie is the baby sun rose. Very, we, very pretty. Right. We did a video right down there. We just did it. We posted it on our channel. And these are the ones that have already started. They've already rooted. Baby sun rose, great ground cover. It wants full sun to do the most of its flowering. Super tough succulent. Love that plant. Really, really cool. Gets beautiful pink flowers. Kind of not the same way as this this uh, mimosa, but it it's just real pretty because it's starburst. Butterfly. That's the zebra. That's oh, that's the video we did a while ago. That's the zebra. That's attracted to the passion vine. Oh, I wish it would have been great if that that one was for the passion vine video. That would have been cool to see it fly by. And then so, the last one is so the last one is one of my most favorite is the ground orchid. Amy has them planted in her yard, and we'll show you some videos here right now of those because they're so pretty. She has yellow, she has a bicolor, she has a deep, purple. she has a deep purple. So nice and pretty. Mm -hmm. Yes, oh, yeah, I love so them. Pretty. Yeah, they're, they're gorgeous. Yeah, and they believe it or not, are, you, since you have that iguana issue, they they tend to be pretty tough and. That they yes, they'll not come as, back. They they bounce back. Yeah, but yeah. they're tough and they they can do well in sun or shade. But they don't get up to two feet. They stay below that. And that's what we want you to take away from all this is that you can, there is options available. There are others. If you have any thoughts or questions, let us know. But wait before we do that, let's rotate over into written care instructions for each one of these and then we'll come back and do a little quick closing. Sound good? Sounds, Sounds good. good. All right, let's go on to that step.
And we're back. So let's go in a couple of questions from the crew. Uncle Mike, does this come in any other colors? Yes, you can get pentas in many different colors. Uh, most garden centers carry this plant. You know, red's really popular, but the pink is just beautiful. I love it. White, oh, so pretty too, yeah. So Uncle Mike, do bees like these plants? Yes, they love bees. Love the mimosa strigulosa. They love all the ones that flower. So that's gonna be your mimosas, the Taiwanese exora, the pentas for sure, as well as butterflies and the dune sunflower. I'm going to tell you my favorite. I have two. Oh. I like this one oh, and yeah. this one. Oh, really? The pilea, yes, the artillery. That's I so know. cool. I'm glad you like it. Oh, how about you, Steph? My favorite is uh, the flower, the red Oh, one. yeah, because it's got that purple lavender color, right? That trumpet flower. Ah. My favorite is the pectus ah, and nice. this one. Oh, yeah, the porcelaca. The purslane. Yeah, the porcelaca purslane. Are oh, you guys going to ask me? What about you, Uncle Mike? I your can't favorite? pick favorites. The plants are going to hate me for it, but I love the mimosa strigulosa. How can you not? It's the Dr. Seuss plant. It's so, fluffy. so pretty. So fluffy. It's so fluffy. It's so fluffy. But Amy, uh, this is my second favorite favorite, the pilea. But how can you not love Portulaca, especially oh, no. the, it's so the orange, the orange variety drives me bonkers. It's so pretty. Oh, but I mean, look at Pentus. It's just it's so unfair because when we before we did this video, I was asking, you know, we have to we have to come up and say what we like just for fun. And we'd like to know what you guys like. Please leave a what is it? Please leave a comment and yep. comments below. In a comment below, let us and know like your and favorite. Subscribe. Yes, and like and subscribe. We'll, we'll make sure we if you have questions, we'll make sure we get back to you. We we work very hard to get back to you. It's been we've been very busy with with getting out videos, so it's sometimes it takes a little bit of time, but we try to get to hundred percent of your comments in as much as we can, so we can help you and your garden here in South Florida. Come back and see us again next time. Yes, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And tell your friends and family, we post videos weekly. Thanks.